Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Monday, August 28th, and I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and Slash NQ, which is the NASDAQ 100. And I'm going to start here on Slash ES, and every single Sunday night, I always start on the daily chart, as you can see right there. You can see D for daily, and what I'm doing here on Sunday nights, before the week starts, I really want to get a broad view and a broad sense of, I want to basically, you know, I like basically calling it, you know, hovering over the market or more, more so the bird's eye view. So that you can really see what's going on in the bigger picture so you can use all of that story that you're building in your smaller time frame trades, right? And so when we look at this daily chart, you can clearly see, I'm going all the way back here to February. Now obviously this chart is extremely has been you know for the entire year pretty bullish and you can see that right you have higher highs lower highs higher highs lower sorry higher lows that's a higher low right there higher highs higher low higher highs and then we did last week catch a little support with a higher low and so but now what we're doing here is obviously you know looking all the way back here that'd be basically you'd be looking for some really long-term trades uh, but we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do for the week and what we're honestly what we're going to do tomorrow. And so what we need to start doing, we need to start kind of dialing down and getting into this smaller time, uh, kind of zooming in and uh, start forming a bias just from here. And you can clearly see that, yes, we did get a little oversold here last week and we caught a pretty decent daily candle sell trigger, but there wasn't a ton of follow through. From these bulls, you can see 2450 to 2454 kind of held pretty nice all of last week, kind of smacked these bulls back down. And so you can kind of see that we are relatively oversold, but for the most part, we're pretty much at equilibrium. You know, this 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 chart as far as on the daily chart for the week goes, right? As far as Friday goes, we could end up all the way back up at all time highs or we can kind of come all the way back down to this 24, uh, 20. So we are more oversold than overbought, uh, but we are at equilibrium on this chart and we need to be ready to be going either direction. And so now what we do, we move to our four hour chart. And what our four hour chart, as far as a day trader goes, the four hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four hour chart? Are we overbought? Are we oversold or are we at equilibrium? And you can clearly see like we are literally smack dab in the middle at equilibrium. We are right there at the middle zero line, right? When all four of these get up above this red line up here, that means price is overbought. And then we had a four hour candle sell trigger. When all four of these get down here, then we are oversold and there is our four hour candle buy trigger, okay? But with this case, we are at equilibrium. We can be a bull and or a bear tomorrow. This chart can pop either direction tomorrow. Nobody is really in control. And so let's write down some targets to the downside. Let's go ahead and get your notes out. Let's go ahead and write down 33 to 30 to the downside and then back up to the upside you can see this really nice range high very very clear cut let's write down 50 uh, to 53 so now what we do 15 day 15 minute plot chart what we're doing here is we're just looking for structure we're looking for the best places to buy best places to sell we're looking for support um, resistance and um, supply and demand zones. And what I always do to keep it simple is I always start on the deviation levels. You can see right here. And then I look left to see if there's any structure there. So yes, clearly we have structure on this plus one deviation. Plus one deviation is literally exactly 2460, which we have been trading. You've been trading with me for the last four weeks. You know how strong 2460 has been support. It's been really good resistance. It's been, it's pretty much just been an amazing level on this chart for the past four weeks. And so I don't foresee us making it up there 2460 tomorrow, but it's there and I plan for everything so that I'm never surprised any given day. And I'm actually gonna go ahead Get rid of that for now. But I plan for everything just so I'm so I'm never surprised. So if these bulls 
are busting out of this massive resistance that we have right there. They're busting through and then holding higher lows. These bulls could be off to the races, and we know exactly where they're going to go. They're going to want to run right there to 2460. If we do make it up to 2460 tomorrow, you might be able to go for a nice little quick sell trade off of it. Touch and then look to enter off of a one minute candle lower high. Or if you don't want to wait for the lower high, you don't have to, but go ahead and make it quick. Or you can just let it settle up around that 2460 zone and we'll come in on Tuesday and, and uh, smack it back down. Okay. Now, next zone, we got our plus 0.5 deviation. We got Wednesday's POC. We got resistance, 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 lots of volume and lots of volume and lots of volume. And I just wrote down in my notes, 50 to 53. Okay, so this is going to be probably one of our favorite best zones tomorrow. So if these bowls want to get after it, we know that they're more than likely either going to make it here to value high, complete the 80% rule, or right here. So both of these targets tomorrow, we got a beautiful, beautiful target right there at value area high, which is roughly 2448. And then of course, we got the beautiful target right here. Basically though, if you miss the buy trigger and spreading that trade up to the upside, don't feel too bad because we can use value rate high tomorrow as resistance. And I'm also potentially can look for my resistance right there on that plus 0.5 uh, deviation. Okay. Now, something that we need to talk about, if this chart does want to go higher, there's a couple things that we need to talk about here. Okay. So we need to be prepared. We can see we're already down about four points already here Sunday night. So we're sitting about right here. So if these bulls want to start going higher, this is what we need to be prepared for. First things first, I'm not saying this is an amazing trade. I'm saying you need to be mindful of this, is looking for potential resistance coming into this market right here at value area low and set. Again, I'm not saying that's an amazing trade. I'm absolutely not even saying that if you do look for sell triggers there, okay, and you know this straight from the training, this isn't new information. You watch the training center, it only takes an hour and a half, and then you just trade the same concepts that you just learned in the training center over and over and over again. So we know that if price breaks outside of value area, which it did, and we're starting to retrace and see and sell triggers right there at value rate low, we can look for some quick sell triggers right there tomorrow. But, okay, here's the second thing that we got to prepare for. We know that these bulls have plenty of room on the four hour chart to run all the way up here. So if these bulls get up above set and then start holding higher lows, so you want to find, you want to get back inside of value and then find your one minute or five minute candle higher lows, Okay, then go ahead and look to enter your at the money binary or an at the money spread and we could potentially see an 80% roll uh, to the upside tomorrow, right? So when price comes outside of value, which we're sitting right here, if we get back inside and then we find our one minute or five minute candle higher lows, you enter right here, you put your stop loss down there and then of course you have plenty of take profits. Look at this, you got Monday POC for a take profit, and of course, value area high uh, as your take profit. So very, 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 very clear cut on what to do if this chart wants to run higher tomorrow. Now, if we go lower, pretty much the only thing, like where price is right now, there's nothing I can do. There is nothing I can do where price is right now, there's no edge. So. The only thing I can do is wait, obviously, for it to go higher, then you just know my plan, or I can wait for this chart to come even lower and wait for my zones. I just wrote down 33 to 30 in my notes. So if I can get this chart to run a little lower, absolutely I can be looking for my buy triggers right off of that minus 0.5 deviation and 24.35. You can see all of that structure right there. So I want it to come on down and then touch and then I can look to enter on a one minute or a five minute candle higher low. Also, something that we need to be fully aware of is that 24.30. So I'm also not against looking for buy triggers off of the 24.30 either. So I got buy triggers on the minus 0.5. I can still even be a buyer there on that 2430. And here's the deal. Um, I will likely not, if we bust through 2430, I will likely not be trading beyond that 
2430 tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and put question marks there. I'm not saying you can't and I'm not saying you shouldn't. Obviously, if we do continue going lower, you still want to be looking for your buy triggers. You got great uh, demand zones down there. I will likely just not want to force anything. I know these bears. I don't mess with bears. Almost never do I mess with bears. So if we start busting through 2430, I'm just going to let it do its thing and reevaluate Monday night and come in on Tuesday. Okay, so now what I want to do, just quickly move uh, to slash and Q. I'm actually going to do this really quick because the plan is almost the exact uh, same as ES. Okay, you can see starting on the four hour chart, this one is a little bit more, more mildly uh, oversold. Uh, instead of that equilibrium, you can kind of see, but it does have plenty of room to continue running lower. I want to go ahead and write down that big round number. Uh, 5,800, I can use that as a target down to the downside tomorrow and support. And then back up to the upside, I want to go ahead and write down 40 to 50 uh, back up uh, to the upside. Okay, so now, same thing as yes, 15 day. This, you can see this one's in a more of a um, nice little rectangle or square, whatever you want to call it. You can see the differences. This one is definitely in more of a kind of a tighter range in my opinion. I think more of a clear cut range. Uh, we start on the plus one deviation. You can see all of that beautiful structure that we have. I don't know if we'll make it to the plus one tomorrow, uh, but we do know that there's plenty of structure planned for everything. Same thing as ES, get up above value very high and if you continue holding higher lows, could be off to the races to that uh, <clears throat> supply zone that we have uh, right there. And then if you get through set, hold higher lows right there. So hold higher lows up above set. You then can look for your 80% rule back up to the upside. I just wrote down 40 to 50 in my notes, which you got to take profit right there on Friday's POC. Go ahead and use uh, Friday's POC as a take profit. And then you do potentially, if you see your indicators, show you that you have more room to continue running higher. You might be able to leave another, if you have multiple contracts on, you might be able to leave another profit target right up there. Uh, value rate high, plus 0.5 deviation, Thursday's POC, go ahead and complete the 80% roll uh, to the upside. You just gotta make sure that your indicators are, aren't getting too oversold because the indicators will likely be getting oversold right here. So uh, just be real, in my opinion, be really, really greedy at taking profits around that 40 to 45 and don't be greedy for holding out for an 80 percent roll okay if we do actually make it up there absolutely i will be looking for my sell triggers right there uh, at value area high if it does continue running higher we need to be mindful of potential resistance coming into this chart right here at set value area low now if we go lower where chart is right now, there is nothing I can do, not a damn thing I can do on this market where it is right now. I need this to either pop up to the upside, then I know exactly what to do, or I need this to come a little lower and I can look for my buy triggers right off of that 5800 that I just wrote down in my notes. It is also the minus 0.5 deviation. We also got some pretty decent structure to the left. If we're busting through minus 0.5 deviation tomorrow, Obviously, you can see the supply zone here. I mean, it's really, really nice, 5780 to 5770. Uh, but here's the catch. If we start trading below 5800 tomorrow, this chart is gonna be really oversold. And it's gonna be really difficult to continue selling even more down to the minus one. So I'm gonna put question marks beyond 5800 tomorrow. I put the question marks there because I'm saying, hey, uh, don't look at me for what to do. Use your indicators, use your gut, use your intuition, or just stay the hell out and save your money for something better. So comment if you have any questions. Make sure that you're recording everything you're doing and take pictures of all of your trades as well and post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.